Well, Quita, we have you on uh, the Black Gospel blog. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, our pleasure to have you here. Um, I, I want to talk about the new album and the new single and all that good stuff, but we always like to go back and learn a little bit about our guests. Okay. Now, first tell us about your parents. I understand they are originally from Liberia. Yes, sir. They, they are. In fact, my whole family is Liberia, West Africa. Um, my parents came here maybe about 35 years ago uh, to look for new opportunities, and, and, and the rest is history. So, They settled in Kansas City? First they settled in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then they came on to Kansas City later on um, after a few years of being here in the States. Yes. Oh, okay. And you were born in Kansas City? I was. Uh-huh. Oh, and you have a most interesting first name. Uh-huh. Where does it come from? What does it mean? Well, it is a Liberian name. Um, it um, means civilized woman and wife of a king, so my parents named me well. Wow, nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Um, now, like many gospel artists, I know you started in the choir as a youth. Did you solo with the choir? You know, from time to time I did. I did. Um, really loved singing in the choir. Since I was five years old, I um, sang with the little children's choir and then went on to do, um, you know, district choirs and things like that. So, yeah, I sure did. Now, and this was a Baptist church? Absolutely, yes. Were your parents Baptist in Liberia? They were. Okay. They were. Uh-huh. And what inspired you to begin writing music? Well, when I was a child, I struggled with a lot of fear. And um, music was the only thing that would bring me peace enough to go to sleep at night. And um, so um, I would listen to a lot of songs. And then it's almost as if God created like a safe place in that. And then as I began to grow into my um, adolescent and my teen years, I had a few friends who were Christians, and they would give me share with me their music. At that time, it was tapes. That's such a long time ago. <laughs> right, right. They would share with me their tapes, and so I would start listening to people like Fred Hammond and Kim Burrell, and it really just began to um, just inspire me to try to do the same thing. You know, I'd never heard Christian music from that perspective, um, one that's soulful and, and, and not traditional gospel. Right. And so as I began to listen, it really began to um, inspire me to want to write songs as well. And I would write songs to, you know, you know, to kind of just express my little self at the time, you know, to express the way I felt. The awesomeness of God is that he allows the very thing that he created for us to use to worship him to be cathartic and expressive for us. So that's kind of how the writing and the singing really got started, was, you know, in those secret times with the Lord. Now, what was the first song you ever wrote? First song I ever wrote? Wow. Um... There was a little song that I wrote. Um, it was called Eternity. I don't remember all the words, <laughs> but it was. I do remember that song. It's so funny that you that you asked me about that. It's my first little song about going to heaven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how, as a youth, uh, the prospect of the great beyond heaven it is is a very important subject, and it's on your mind. It is. It is indeed. Well, now, do you write your songs on piano or guitar? How do you write your songs? Usually, it's at my piano. Okay. Um, yeah, I sit down and I kind of, you know, just start playing. And then a lot of times, you know, people don't want to hear this, but, you know, I'm singing in the shower and God will give me a melody. And, you know, so it's just it really is not any um, formula for the way I do it. But, you know, piano is my instrument. So. Sure. Have you taken lessons on it or self-taught? Kind of self-taught. I just kind of play by ear, yeah. So, And it's weird because once you start playing by ear, it's hard to go and backtrack and learn the, te- the proper way to, to read music and the techniques and stuff. So... I haven't yet, but <laughs> hopefully one day I will. Oh, sure. Well, now you mentioned Fred Hammond and others. What were some of your other music inspirations? Well, um, really loved Fred Hammond, loved Kim Burrell, loved C.C. Winans. But, you know, as far as secular music goes, you know, I've, I'm a big fan of soul music. So um, people like Roberta Flagg, who's a phenomenal single singer-songwriter that could do so much with just a few words and a few melodies. She plays a big part in my little musical heritage. I mm-hmm. um, really love her. Um, and there's just a host of others, but she's just the one that's forefront in my mind. I um, really love Anita Baker. She's so, her voice is so rich and unique. Yes. And, and so she was someone that as a, as a little girl that I looked up to as well. So. Now, what was your breakout moment in terms of singing when you realized, hey, I, I might be able to do this professionally? Wow. Um... I don't know if I ever had a breakout moment. <laughs> I just kept doing it and doing it and, and just kind of let the Lord lead me. You know, it's weird because even now, it's just, this is all just so amazing <laughs> to me and mind-blowing 
that I'm even at this point. So I don't know that I ever had an official moment. I just knew that, you know, I like to write songs and I love to worship God, and, and he was leading me in that direction. So I just started to, you know, pursue that and follow God and follow my heart. So. Well, now tell us about your new CD, Tears for Fears. Where does the title come from? Well, um, the title Tears for Fears is a term, and it actually refers to the exchange for one emotion of another. And, um, you know, there have been times in my life where I just have really gone through, you know, and it's felt like I've had to fight for everything that I've gotten. And um, the song Tears for Fears comes from a time in my life where I felt that way. And the actual term Tears for Fears kind of was reminiscent to me of the um, passage of Scripture that says that God gives us beauty for ashes. He gives us strength for fear, gladness for mourning, and peace for despair. And every time that I felt that I've had to struggle through something, you know, I've learned as a Christian to kind of give it to God. And as I've, I've given my trouble to Him, He's given me peace and He's given me joy. And the song itself kind of just talks about my journey with God and how no matter if I have to cry or I have to go through, that God is always there with me to make that even exchange. You know, that the song is just kind of like a ah uh, moment where I'm, I'm, I finally feel like I've arrived to a place where I have peace with myself and peace with God because I've learned to trust Him. Now, did you write all the songs on the new album? I did, I did. Now, tell us about the first single, A Friend. A Friend. A Friend kind of um, just talks about, you know, that Jesus is our friend. You know, a lot of times we look at Jesus as God, and he is the God of the Bible. And, and you know, as in my walk with Christ, I've just come to know him as not just um, God, but my friend, mm -hmm. my personal friend, that he'll walk with me, that he'll stick closer with the brother. And so closer than a brother, so I just um, wanted to write about that, because it, it just seemed like at that particular time in my life, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll feel like you're friendless, mm -hmm. and, um, and Jesus has always been there, so I wanted to write about it. Are, are the songs on the album then kind of songs you wrote over a period of years, or did you write a lot of them with the specific idea of putting them on this album? You know, it's, over, it's been over a span of time. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, one of the songs on the album, it's called set me free. I wrote that song when I was 15. Wow. And um, it really just kind of talks about how I felt in that moment, you know, when I was 15. You know, I was going through what adolescents go through, trying to find myself, and I really didn't understand the love of God. Mm -hmm. And so that song was kind of my prayer to him and his response to me. Um, Tears for Fears I wrote, I think, maybe two years ago or maybe last year. No, I wrote it two years ago. Yeah, so it's been over, like, the span of my, <laughs> over my, my life. I kind of write all the time, and, and all of the songs that I've written have seemed to just kind of fit this idea. And the crazy thing is, Tears for Fears is the, the last song I wrote that's on the album. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So that final thought kind of came together once that song was written. So it's, it's kind of weird, but, yeah. So would it be fair to say that a lot of the, the, the songs that are on the album that you that you obviously have written them all, that they really do come from a very personal experience? They do. They do. They come out of either an experience or my personal time with the Lord or my prayer time. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely, very personal. Now, who produced the album? Well, I had a host of producers. Oh. I um, worked with Glenn Woodward. Mm -hmm. He is an um, awesome producer and um, music pastor. I also worked with a guy by the name of R.J. Kelly. He's an up-and-coming um, drummer. He's been all over the place, touring with um, very notable artists. Worked with him. Worked with, um, those are the two probably primary um, producers I work with, but there's been a host of other musicians that have contributed to it, and I would like to also give myself a producer credit because <laughs> I was right in there with them. So yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> any, any guest artists on the album? I have. Um, I do. I do have a couple of guest artists. One, his name is Ernest Merritt, um, awesome friend of mine. And then another, his name is Tori Isaac, and he's featured on the song "This Love." Ernest is on the song uh, "A Man Named Jesus." Oh. So yeah, both of them, awesome, awesome um, vocalists in their own right. Now, is it? Are you still in Kansas City? I am, I am. And are the artists and the musicians and everyone from the Kansas City area? Pretty much, yeah. Everyone's right here. Cool. So now, did you have a CD release party? I have not yet, but that that's coming up, hopefully in October. It'll be right here in Kansas City. Okay. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. But, but the album is officially out? It is officially out. It's backward, I know, but... <laughs> that's okay. No, that's sometimes you got to have the party later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it came out, was it in late June, correct? Yeah. And and the single is out? Yes, sir. How has the response been thus far? I think it's been, I've gotten a lot of great uh, feedback from people about the song. You know, we're still in the promotional stages, but I think that it's um, 
is I'm very optimistic about it. I think you know the people that have heard it, you know they're touched by it, and it and it kind of reaches people in a very personal way because it came from my heart. So yeah. gotten really great feedback from it. Well, and it's well produced because I went to hear it, mm -hmm. and it plowed out of the speakers. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is really clear. <laughs> oh, uh, well, great. awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, no, it was very cool. Now, tell us about One Sound, One Voice. One Voice, One Sound. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. One Voice, One Sound is a song that I wrote for, for an organization called Halo. Halo is an organization that's based in Florida that has an orphanage in Liberia, West Africa, which is where my, my family is from, in fact, near the Monrovia area, which is where my parents are actually from. And their orphanage um, is there to provide a home for children who were orphaned by the Civil War um, in Liberia that ended in 2004. Okay. And um, I've been partnering with the organization, really believing in their cause and their purpose. And one thing they asked me to do was to write a song for them. And so that is the song that came about, was One Voice, One Sound. And it's on the album as well? That will be on the deluxe edition of the album. Ooh, good, good marketing, good marketing. Absolutely, yeah. So we want to raise money for them and get behind them and hold their hands up as they reach toward God and His work. So Excellent. really excited about that as well. Well, now, of all the current gospel singers out there, any artists, really, who would you most like to sing a duet with? Wow, that is a complete... It's so many awesome people. I probably would love to do something with, like, a Fred Hammond oh. or... Or a Kirk Franklin or something. These are people that I just look up to and say, oh, my goodness, Lord God. <laughs> yeah, so, if, yeah, if ever the opportunity presented itself, those would be the two. Very cool. Well, do you ever think of doing a concert in Liberia? I would absolutely love to do a concert in Liberia. In fact, I hope to one day uh, make a trip with Halo um, to Liberia to kind of visit the orphanage and then also to minister as well. So that is definitely something that's in the future, hopefully the near future. Well, cool. Well, that, that was my final question is, what does the future hold for you? Wow, lots of awesome things. Um, well, you know, even now I'm kind of working on some music um, for the deluxe edition of the album. Um, I'll be visiting a few cities and and just uh, just continue, continuing to put my hand to the plow and really try to get the music out there, try to minister to people, and uh, hopefully more work with Halo as well. So I'm really excited about the future here. Well, Queena, we're excited about your future as well. Thank you for being part of the Black Gospel blog. And, Thank uh, you so much for having me. It oh, means so much to me. Oh, my pleasure.